dreaming. You don't get hounded and harassed by the FBI for dreaming. You don't become, you don't, you are not declared the most dangerous Negro in America because you have a dream. Dr. King was not a convenient hero, but he is inconvenient because he disrupted what was to create what ought to be. And my sisters and brothers, so maybe we ought to learn from James Washington who called Dr. King our nation's most effective prophet. You didn't get it. I'll see if I can make it real plain because in scripture I got some preaching colleagues in the house. They gonna feel me on this one. In scripture there was a prophet by the name of Elijah, Sean. And Sean understand that Elijah had upset King Ahab and his wife Jezebel because he had gone into the palace and he had said, check this, until I say so, there will be no rain nor dew in the land. That was going to paralyze the economy of Palestine. And three years went by, a drought gripped the land. And now they're looking for this prophet who had spoken truth to power. And when they find him, Obadiah does. He tells, he tells him, tell your boy, Ahab, I'm right here. Ahab comes to see him and says, yo, are you the one who's been troubling Israel? You missed your shout. I see if I can help you. He says to this prophet, are you the one who has been troubling Israel? I knew I was going to be with the St. Petersburg section of NCNW and have all of these ballers and shot callers. So I did my homework and etymologically I unpacked the word trouble in the original Hebrew language. It's going to shout you. The word trouble means to royal water or make waves. Here comes your shout. And so we sing in essence, are you the one who's been making waves in Israel? And that's what we must say about Dr. King. Dr. King made waves in America. He made waves in this world. He made waves. You still not shouting. I see if I can help you. I have a wonderful daughter, Abney Jewel, and Abney Jewel is now 26, and she's trying to run my life, but Abney and I, we flash back to those days when she was a toddler, and when we flash back to those days, we had a flashback this weekend. She said, Daddy, you remember when you used to come into the bathroom, I'm taking a bath, and I had all of these bubbles, and in the midst of the bubbles, I had a rubber duck. I said, yeah. She said, you remember that time I showed you how I could get my rubber duck to me even though it was, it was at the other end of the uh, tub but I got it to me without touching it. I said yeah that was cool. Um, I'll tell y'all what happened. She had invited me in. I'm seated there watching her enjoy herself in the big tub and all of a sudden she says daddy watch me get that rubber duck. It's at the other end of the tub but I'm going to make it come to me and y'all she raised both of her hands and they came down boom on the water and the water then began to royal and the next thing you know the waves reached the other end of the tub and grabbed the duck and the duck rolled the waves back to her owner and all I'm trying to say America has got to come back to its original principles of liberty and justice and equality of opportunity and Dr. King said you ain't gonna come back until somebody makes some waves and so we are challenged right here in St. Petersburg. It's time to make some waves until all of God's children have access to equality of opportunity. Y'all didn't like that but we got to reclaim Martin King as the drum major for justice. Not only that we've got to revolt against injustice because Dr. King disrupted in a revolutionary radical away what was because Dr. King believed the nation could do a whole lot better. We've got to revolt against injustice wherever we see it 
recognizing that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. To use the language of Dr. King, we've got to revolt against injustice. I'm not coming through. I make this real plain. It always excites my heart when I speak at one of these uh, kinds of MLK celebrations and there's a rainbow representation and it's not just a black affair because Dr. King is an American hero, the greatest American ever produced who led the second American revolution. And why do I say that? Because we need everybody to stand up for justice and righteousness. We need allies to recognize that if there is not justice for all, there ain't justice at all. Y'all still not get this thing. I'll help you out. Uh, did you see recently the piece that was done on Quincy Jones? It was real hot. Quincy did this hot piece. I hope y'all did not miss that. But Quincy testified about Frank Sinatra, old blue eyes. Can I shout you right quick? Do y'all know that they were on to sing and do a performance, a series of performances in Vegas? And when they got there, Quincy Jones and the rest of the blacks could not watch this, stay or eat in the hotel where they were playing and when they told Frank Sinatra do you know what Frank did Frank said well I'm gonna shut this down and we are not going to stay here we are not going to play here if we can't stay here if Quincy cannot stay I'm not going to stay if Quincy cannot eat here I'm not going to eat here I'm gonna shut it down until all of them can participate and Quincy used his privilege and, and Frank Sinatra used his privilege to open up the doors for those who did not have privilege and all I'm trying to say we need some Frank Sinatras today who are going to change policies that shut doors of opportunity on those who do not have do we have some Frank Sinatras in the house who say I have my privilege not for myself I'm not going to celebrate King unless I fight his nightmare.